Just wrap that right around there. Grab it like you grab a dick. <laughs> this thing has been dead for a little while, so we've been scavenging parts off of it, what have you, what have you, and well, it's actually been a halfway decent engine for the time being. We've put this thing through hell. As you can see on this side, we have blown part of the cover off. Want to light the sound fire? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Get the lighter fluid. Wait, now? Sure. <laughs> Let's light this thing on fire. That will be the new channel intro. Lighting this engine on fire. So, a couple things that I know of that went wrong with this engine. He ran this engine, so he knows a lot more than I do of what, what had all gone wrong. What didn't go wrong? What did not go wrong? Well, you did not grenade it completely. I didn't put oil in it. I mean, I didn't lube this gear area up. Oh, it's dirty. Well, you only have to do that if you're running it like I do. My other one's lubed up. So, yeah, I guess uh, the next upload might be a video on my bike. I'm up to maybe 2,000-ish miles on it. And it looks in a real good shape for that. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about this here engine. Uh, properly maintaining an engine like this. I think it's dripping water. It is dripping water. There's a bolt. No, no. Thing is turning. Uh, we need some pliers. We get the pliers. Oh, pretty lights. Love that kind. The approved way to turn over this engine, just use pliers. Uh, I can see the piston rings now. Nope, still gone. I think that there might be water inside of this. That's the only reason I'm turning it. Turn it back just a little bit? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's water in there. So we're not using any oil in this engine, we're just using water. It's close enough. It's close enough. It's and cheaper. It lubricates. It's cheaper. Yes, it is cheaper. It's basically free. <laughs> so basically what you want to do to maintain this engine, you got this thing fresh out of the package. What do you want to do first? Well, you want to put the thing on the bike. You want to bolt on the muffler because that does not come bolted on. It just takes up way too much space. I put the chain on, put the, the sprocket, whatever, uh, the tank. Just make this thing run. What you want to do first, you want to take all of these in a crisscross pattern like one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And then you skip back to one. And you want to tighten all them things down. Maybe three grunts tight and you pop in your spark plug, hope that it starts up. If it loosens up, you went too far. Oh yeah, you wanna tighten it up till, till it loosens up and back a quarter turn. Now, finicky parts on this bike, right here, that's the electrics, in this case right here. What I did to mine is I just took this cover off, I drilled a hole about there and I drilled a hole underneath there, bottom, well, basically right where the bottom of the engine sits. So all the, the water that collects in there, just gonna fall out the hole. It's good enough for me. Might be good enough for you. You might wanna look into that. It just works for me. So uh, yeah, as for this engine right now, he ended up losing bolts and was uh, a little bit too lazy slash cheap to buy new ones. So what we ended up doing is, I think that we had him try and 
weld the thing, but it just for turned when? Out. Uh, when uh, the bolts had. Uh, oh no, that was the nuts fell off. No, I had the two rear bolts holding it, and that was it. That was so. This thing was gonna. Yeah, every time I, every yeah. time I slowed down and went pop 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 pop. So uh, I came over and I said, "Can you weld aluminum?" No. I can't weld aluminum. I don't have the right setup. <laughs> and then he goes, I was like, and he's like, what do you need? And I'm like, well, I want my engine welded to the frame. And he goes, give me 10 minutes. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure something out. And he did. I just uh, splatter welded around there just to uh, hopefully keep the engine from coming up too far. No good penetration whatsoever. I didn't really expect it to. But uh, the bolts that used to come out of here, welded those right to the frame, worked real good for a little while. And the back ones, I think that they were still working, you just took them out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, the carburetor, it leaked every now and then, whatever. The carburetor didn't leak, it was the fuel shutoff valve that leaked. These bolts kept on falling out, so I just welded them things in. I think um, one of them broke. That was my first loud exhaust. Oh yeah. yeah. And I don't own a table or a uh, angle grinder now, so I took this off and took it right to the table. <laughs> I just yeah. went straight through it. Yeah. That. That thing sounded. I awful. wish that y'all could have seen that. That one sounded awful. Yeah, wood blade on a metal. Just that entire engine just sounded terrible when it was running. It wasn't deep at all. It was more. It was higher than the wheat whacker. It was a high pitched whine, terrible to get started. Clutch it and grab. It was funny to let people ride. Clutch it and grab. Kill switch wasn't working. Bet that the clutch will grab now. Compression was awful. <laughs> <laughs> What's neutral? <laughs> neutral. You just hold the clutch in. Yeah, you don't need to. Remember when my clutch cable broke and I had to ride home like that? That's how I stopped. I would. Oh yeah, well mine that uh, mine did that a few days ago. So yeah, <laughs> you got your uh, your oiling area right there. You just drip a couple gyps of oil in there as you're riding on down the street. So keep your old chain all lubed up. Too much work to just route that thing up to the chain. <laughs> that bike didn't have a master link either. Let's see, we're missing a bolt here, missing a bolt there. I don't know if we have any bolts in there. That's on the new bike. That's on the new bike. That's on the new bike. Weird in mine, it just fell out. <laughs> that the, was um, lock tight. I did I took the studs out of the intake. Remember I put that stupid performance carburetor in there that did nothing. Yep. Alright, so yeah, this is this is a thing. This is the clutch. Take a look inside here. Those are all the clutch grabby thingies. And they spin. Well, the engine spins this thing, which spins all those little grabby thingies. And this thing stays stationary until you let the clutch out, which pushes this thing to those. There's a plate behind it that grabs along with this thing. And that turns the sprocket makes your engine go forward. That's how your clutch works. Now how do you go in reverse? Reverse. Well, you just have to hit it just right to kick the engine on backwards. Kind of amazing that this thing is not seized more than it is. Uh -huh. Sitting out there in the rain for all that time. Months. Months. Oh, see, it still turns over. Huh. So that's awesome. Let's get all clutch spring. Good for just off the center, just like just jiggle that plate back and forth and just makes all kind of racket. This bike sounded terrible. Actually, now that I remember it, I need to uh, grease the things in my bike so it'll stop whining. So yeah, that's pretty much the ins and the outs. What you wanna do, you get the thing out of the box this is what you want to do. Now, tighten down the head bolts. You want to replace the clutch straight out of the box. The throttle is probably okay. 
if it's really hard to twist buy a new cable you'll just strip out your plastic that way um, well if this thing isn't adjusted you can just pop the case off adjust it yourself if it's not grabbing uh, where the hell is that little screw this little screw goes right on top of there there's a little set screw in there you take that out you pull the clutch in and push this thing down turn that in until it tightens up and back a quarter turn back a quarter damn stuttering tighten that thing on up and then you go back a quarter turn so once that all does that she should chooch now quick little performance mod just chop the bitch off you don't need that uh, if your nuts keep on backing out screw it just weld them in place if you want to sound nice, take the baffle out. For that. Actually, I still have the baffle. Yeah, show them the baffle. Here it is. Is so this is what the baffle looks like? So yeah, this right here, that is the baffle. What happens is this is jammed up the tent. Ha! Gay! And your exhaust comes in through the tube. This is all enclosed in a chamber real nice and tight and what happens is it has to force through there out to here and this thing is capped off with the little cap going through there so it has to go back up through these two little tiny holes into this chamber right here and back out through the exhaust which comes out like that this little cap here that goes into that hole now I've seen other models with uh, basically like a little crunched uh, piece of a can those you just hack them things right off and you're good you're good bud you're good let's see what what finally killed this engine um well after torturing it I think the, the one thing that really killed it was I did a I tried to do a burnout on the street and it died and then finally I oh, had yes I remember that one I had to ride home on the choke remember that I remember that one but I mean we were just we probably did 60 burnouts with that thing just dumping the clutch and spinning it and I believe that that one was uh, when you ran a whole bottle of octane booster without any oil in it at all yes that was stupid that was very stupid but it ran real good. It ran real good. Until it seized I up. didn't even put, I didn't fill the tank up at all. I literally probably put an ounce of gas in there. And that was the really good stuff. He's pounding down, loaded up and trucking. Are we going to do what they say can't be done? We've got a long.